right small deviation from our series of lectures because some of our students asked to explain about anatomy of heart that's what in this session i will try to discuss about heart actually if you take the general consideration i am taking schematic diagram of heart it is not anatomical diagram just this is schematic diagram if you see heart contains four chambers four chambers right atrium left atrium right ventricle left ventricle is it so right atrium receives the venous blood from the lower part of the body through the inferior vena cava this is inferior vena cava from the upper part of the body through the superior vena cava right so right atrium receives the venous blood from the superior vena cava and inferior vena cava this blood enters into right ventricle through the orifice called atrioventricular orifice this atrioventricular orifice contains three walls these walls we can also call as cusps so it is having three cusps anterior cusp posterior cusp and septal cusp clear through this atrioventricular orifice this venous blood enters into right ventricle right from this right ventricle blood pumps that means during systole blood pumps into the pulmonary trunk so here pulmonary trunk this is pulmonary trunk pulmonary trunk bifurcates into two right and left so here this is right branch and this is left branch clear right branch opens into right lung left branch opens into left lung this is right lung and this is left lung clear so here oxygenation will takes place right gases exchange will takes place so oxygenated blood enters into oxygenated blood enters into where from the each lung two veins will be arising what are those superior and inferior pulmonary veins so this is one vein and of course if you want to draw one more thing you can draw like this this is superior and inferior pulmonary veins from the right lung and superior and inferior pulmonary veins from the left lung right so this is oxygenated blood now after gases exchange this oxygenated blood enters into enters into left ventricle through the atrioventricular orifice only but it is left atrioventricular orifice which contains two valves that's what this valve what we are calling bicuspid valve or mitral valve right so blood enters like this clear and during systole again blood from the left ventricle enters into aorta enters into aorta and supplies throughout the body clear so this is general consideration of circulation see here right heart deals with deoxygenated blood left heart deals with oxygenated blood from the right heart blood entering into the lungs clear so lungs we can also called as pulmonary so this circulation what we are calling pulmonary circulation and from the left heart blood pumping into the aorta aorta means it is supplying to the systems of the body so this circulation what we are calling systemic circulation clear so here pulmonary circulation here systemic circulation clear so this is general consideration now we will see the anatomical view of different features of heart clear so that i am removing this
so if you take the diagram of heart this is right atrium and this is inferior border this is inferior border and here left auricle this is left auricle clear and we can see superior vena cava here this is opening of superior vena cava clear and here inferior vena cava this is right atrium clear now here you can observe one groove what is that groove interventricular groove interventricular groove because of this interventricular groove there will be indentation in the inferior border this indentation what we are calling incisora excis cardis i will tell you in the inferior border don't worry so here what will be there aorta this is aorta so aorta gives branches brachiocephalic trunk left common carotid artery left subclavian artery right then from the right ventricle what is the artery arising what is it and it is bifurcated what is it yes pulmonary trunk clear so this is pulmonary trunk and branches of pulmonary trunk right and left branches clear so this is the anterior view if you see from the anterior side if you see the posterior view how it will be here this is left atrium with two openings on each side what are these two openings pulmonary veins superior pulmonary vein inferior pulmonary vein right then over this you can see pulmonary arteries that means bifurcation pulmonary arteries you can see here right and left pulmonary arteries then aorta arch of aorta this is arch of aorta of course branches also you can draw three branches what i have explained over there clear then on the right side superior vena cava here superior vena cava right atrium with inferior vena cava this is inferior vena cava is it so we have drawn both atria below that we can found ventricles is it here in the left side you can see small part of auricle which auricle is this left auricle is it so here this is 
posterior view of heart this is anterior view of heart and this is posterior view of heart clear now we will see the first external features whatever we are seeing then we will go for another consideration see what is this right atrium what is this right ventricle what is this left ventricle clear so i am writing here this is right atrium this is right ventricle this is left ventricle this is left atrium and this is right atrium clear so right atrium and right ventricle separated by what is this groove this groove what we call atrioventricular groove atrioventricular groove actually this atrioventricular groove just imagine upper part two atria are there lower part two ventricles are there there will be separation between the atria and ventricle that separation line what you are calling atrioventricular sulcus right here this is the atria and this is the ventricle it is separating anteriorly see here this is separating anteriorly right then in the posterior part see here this line it will come here and from here we cannot see from the anterior view we have to see from posterior view so this line will come here is it so this is what posterior part of atrioventricular groove this is anterior part of atrioventricular groove and this is posterior part of atrioventricular groove that's what that groove i cannot draw from the anterior side that's what i am drawing dotted lines is it i can draw dotted lines right so that means this line which is present behind but in the posterior view i can draw with continuous line only that's what i have drawn here is it then after winding here after winding the left surface and left border it enters into see here this is left border after winding the left border again it is entering into the anterior surface clear so this is again atrioventricular sulcus clear what does it mean it is c shape it is having posterior part and anterior part anterior part having right part and left part and the gap between the two ends of c occupied by this pulmonary trunk right otherwise infundibulum of right ventricle so this part is there that's what it is not continuous it is c shape i hope you understood it is c shape that's what it is having posterior part right anterior part left anterior part see here this is right anterior part this dotted line is posterior part and this is left anterior part clear so this total it is posterior part of atrioventricular sulcus clear i hope you understood then what is this right ventricle and what is this left ventricle separating groove is there this separating groove what we are calling interventricular interventricular sulcus this interventricular sulcus separating the two ventricles and it is present in the anterior surface that's what this groove what we call anterior interventricular groove anterior interventricular groove this anterior interventricular groove after winding around the inferior border that means after cutting the inferior border it has to enter into posterior surface so it will winds here and it will enters into diaphragmatic surface but that i cannot draw here because it is anterior view but i can draw here of this is actually here here is the here is the what is this incisora excis cardis here it it enters here and it will 
go like this. Clear? But that line, that is continuous line. Because we are seeing from the posterior surface, that's what I can draw continuous line. But here I cannot draw continuous line. That's what I am drawing dotted line. It will go and touches with posterior part of atrioventricular sulcus. So, it will go and touches with posterior part of atrioventricular sulcus. Clear? Now, what is this ventricle? This is left ventricle and this ventricle is right ventricle. I hope now you understood. Clear? What are the different sulcus? This sulcus is anterior interventricular sulcus because it is present in the anterior surface or sternocostal surface. And this groove which is present in the diaphragmatic surface, this surface what we are calling diaphragmatic surface. So, this groove what we are calling posterior interventricular sulcus or groove. Clear? So, this is the view of anterior and posterior view. And for explanation of different relations of heart, we have to take transfer section transverse section of thorax also. Then only we can see the relations of heart. Clear? For that, I am taking heart cross section. So, here we can see the this is heart cross section. Right? And it is surrounded by it is surrounded by pericardium is it or not so this is pericardium clear we are taking the transverse section so that knife will pass through the heart we can see interior of heart also that's what i am drawing here interior also so this is interventricular septum and this is interatrial septum and here atrioventricular orifice this is one atrioventricular orifice and this is another atrioventricular orifice is it clear then this is surrounded by or it is covered by lungs is it or not heart is present in the middle mediastinum that means in between the two lungs clear so here lungs sorry so here lungs so this is one lung which lung is that right lung when you take the cross section this is right lung and this is left lung. Clear? Then lungs are covered by pleura. Is it? The pleura also I will try to draw. Otherwise, just imagine this is pleura. Inside this, I will draw lungs. Okay. So, here I am drawing lungs. Here. Here also. Right? Then here hilum will be there, no? Structures which are entering and leaving the lung. So this is hilum. Right? So this is hilum. Right? From the lungs, 
there will be two on each side what are these pulmonary veins these pulmonary veins opening into which atrium what is this atrium yes left atrium so here also left atrium clear then any structure entering from the heart to lungs yes what are those here artery is there no pulmonary artery so pulmonary arteries these are pulmonary arteries clear any other structure entering into lung yes tell me please bronchus right so here bronchus clear and behind these structures what will be present esophagus here esophagus this is esophagus clear then next to the esophagus that means behind that what will be present thoracic aorta thoracic aorta then anything else hemi ajegas vein then thoracic duct thoracic duct then ajegas vein clear posterior to that what will be there very simple there will be vertebra this is body of vertebra and here is the vertebral canal this is transverse process and here is spinous process is it clear of course you can see ribs here ribs this side also clear and here anteriorly what will be there sternum here you can form cut section of sternum is it this is the view when you take the transverse section clear with these diagrams we will try to explain different external features and relations clear now what are the presenting parts of heart if you see what is this apex apex and this part is base so second one is base then borders how many borders are there three borders are there this is right border inferior border and left border so borders how many three borders right border left border inferior border clear then surfaces this surface what you are seeing anteriorly but this surface we are calling as sternocostal surface because it is in relation with the sternum and ribs so surfaces surfaces how many three surfaces sternocostal surface sternocostal surface then left surface 
diaphragmatic surface right so diaphragmatic surface here diaphragmatic surface and left surface this is a diaphragmatic surface clear now we will discuss one by one first we will take the apex apex present at the fifth intercostal space actually it is formed only by the left ventricle it is formed only by left ventricle okay nothing is giving contribution only left ventricle and this apex present at the fifth intercostal space 9 cm from the midline just medial to the midclavicular line surface marking see here 9 cm from the midline and midclavicular line in the fifth intercostal space here apex will be there there only you can feel the apex bit forward thrust of apex during systole right so that is apex and some books they give it is present just below and medial to the nipple of course that is correct but nipple is not reliable point because it varies from individual to individual and it varies from male to female right that's what nipple is not reliable point remember these things 9 cm from the midline just medial to the midclavicular line right and in the fifth intercostal space right but if you see the infants before 2 years of life it is present at the fourth intercostal space just lateral to the midclavicular line just lateral to the midclavicular line but it will come to adult position after 2 years clear so that is about apex any difficulty up to here if no i will go forward okay then base base is formed by 2/3 by left atrium 1/3 by right atrium 2/3 by left atrium 1/3 by right atrium so this is base and it is most fixed part it is most fixed part clear now we will see the boundaries of base superiorly what is there pulmonary trunk bifurcation along with that there will be transverse pericardial sinus transverse pericardial sinus actually this transverse pericardial sinus you must be studied in the pericardium if no i will explain don't worry at this session just you remember that bifurcation of pulmonary trunk and transverse pericardial sinus superiorly inferiorly what is there this you know what is this groove posterior part of atrio ventricular groove or coronary sulcus why in this part coronary sinus will be present that i am not going to draw now i will tell you in the blood supply of heart because i don't want to disturb the diagram till the completion of external features clear so this is coronary sinus will be present here within this groove so that's what this groove what we are calling coronary sulcus so inferior boundary for the base is coronary sulcus clear then towards right side that means what is the right boundary for the base right border that's it actually this is right border so here right border then what is the left boundary line which is extending from the superior pulmonary vein which pulmonary vein left one left superior pulmonary vein to left inferior pulmonary vein clear so these are the boundaries right then what are the relations relations are if you see the pericardium you can see one obliquus sinus here right at this session just you remember that obliquus sinus if you know the pericardium 
you will be understanding but if you don't know don't worry here oblique to sinus will be there that i will tell you in the pericardium if time permits so here oblique to sinus pericardial sinus then behind that what will be there there will be parietal layer of pericardium that means serous pericardium and fibrous pericardium after that what will be present see here these are the structures which are present posterior to the base actually this is base no this is base you know already base is formed by left atrium and right atrium so this is left atrium and this is right atrium this is left ventricle and this is right ventricle is it so these are the structures which are present posterior to it what are those what is this right pulmonary veins both superior and inferior why left pulmonary vein will not be there because see here it is coming here only so it is not giving any contribution to the posterior relations right then pulmonary artery so pulmonary arteries will be there both then what is this what is this so i will draw like this so that you can understand bronchus say so, right so bronchus here then anything else is there esophagus then aorta hemi ajegas vein thoracic duct ajegas vein along with that we can found splanchnic nerves greater and lesser splanchnic nerves right so splanchnic nerves also present clear so these are posterior relations any difficulty in this just these only relations right then base completed but in this base one important mcq is there vertebral level of base vertebral level of base when the person is in supine position at the time base will be present at the level of t5 to t8 but when the person is in standing position it descends one vertebra down so that it is t6 to t9 important mcq either this one or this one if they ask vertebral level of base in supine position that time you have to write t5 to t8 if they ask vertebral level of base in standing position at the time t6 to t9 right so this is about base any difficulty right then we will go for base telling se okay so next one is borders what are the borders right border left border inferior border first we will take the right border right border extending from the superior vena cava opening to inferior vena cava opening it is less like border more like surface because it is rounded border it is rounded border and within the border we can found very shallow depression or very shallow sulcus that sulcus what we are calling sulcus terminalis sulcus terminalis it corresponds the inner side there will be one ridge will be there one crista will be there crista means crest one crest will be there that crest what we are calling crista terminalis crista terminalis so inside ridge outside groove that outside groove what we are calling sulcus terminalis inside crest is there no that crest what we are calling crista terminalis clear so in the right border can found one sulcus that sulcus what we are calling sulcus terminalis clear and the right border formed only by the right atrium nothing is giving contribution right border formed by only right atrium right then 
what are the relations relations lung will be there right lung mediastinal surface of lung and its pleura then anything else in between the lung and heart is there or not yes phrenic nerve and pericardiaco phrenic vessels phrenic nerve and pericardiaco phrenic vessels so that i will show here this is right border right here you can found pericardiaco phrenic vessels and phrenic nerve imagine this is phrenic nerve clear so these are relations of right border so right border completed then left border left border extending from the left auricle to the apex left border extending from the left auricle to the apex of heart clear along with this border you can found left marginal artery and corresponding vein right so don't worry about that arteries and veins anyway i will explain in the blood supply of heart at this session just you remember it is extending from the left auricle to apex of heart and it separates the which surface is this sternocostal surface from the left surface that's it clear so left border also completed then inferior border inferior border extending from the inferior vena cava opening to the apex actually this border we can also call as margo acutus margo acutus because it is acute angle right so margo acutus and left border what we can call left border this is inferior border left border margo obtuses margo obtuses right so inferior border extending from the inferior vena cava opening to the apex near the apex there will be invagination or indentation or insertion because of what is this anterior interventricular group anterior interventricular group winds here so that there is invagination this invagination what we are calling incisura incisura apices cardis very simple incisura means insertion apices means apex cardis means heart insertion at the apex of heart that's it clear so inferior border also completed actually along the inferior border you can found right marginal artery and corresponding veins here left marginal artery is no here right marginal artery clear so that's it about inferior border right now surfaces sternocostal surface sternocostal surface sternocostal surface means anterior surface this is sternocostal surface sternocostal surface formed by see here what is this right atrium and this is right ventricle and this is left ventricle these three structures along with small portion of auricle what is this auricle left auricle this left auricle also will give contribution for the anterior surface or sternocostal surface of heart clear now in this anterior surface any grooves are there yes this is atrioventricular groove right part of atrioventricular groove anterior interventricular groove and left part of atrioventricular groove these are the grooves i am not telling the structures which are present in the grooves you remember grooves properly then i will tell you structures which are present in the groove in the blood supply 
because if i tell now you don't know the names of those arteries you will be confused that's what i am not telling see here this is the atrioventricular root right part this is the atrioventricular root left part and this is interventricular sulcus that to anterior interventricular sulcus clear so these are the features now <coughs> relations what are the relations see here this anterior surface imagine this is heart this anterior surface of the heart covered by anterior border of lung and its pleura both sides but below the left fourth intercostal space otherwise uh, i will draw one diagram for that so that you will understand because it's very important one clinical point is there here that's what i am stressing see here i am taking small heart here so this is is it okay visible okay so this is heart and this is superior vena cava here inferior vena cava right and here aorta clear see in case of right side in case of right side lung will covers like this right so lung covers like this but in case of left side it covers up to fourth intercostal space then it deviates then it deviates laterally and forms notch here what is this notch cardiac notch so it will be like this clear that means this part it is directly present behind the sternum right actually this sternocostal surface extends from third costal cartilage to sixth costal cartilage third costal cartilage to sixth costal cartilage clear this surface anteriorly it is covered by both right and left lungs up to fourth intercostal space after fourth intercostal space right lung will covers but left lung will deviates little laterally so that some space or some part of the anterior surface or sternocostal surface present direct contact with sternum which part of the sternum if you take the sternum i hope you know the sternum diagram so this is sternum and this is body of sternum and this is gyphoid process of sternum this is manubrium sternum is it it is having four pieces clear lungs and pleura will be present like this in case of right side in case of left side it will be present up to here here fourth intercostal space will be there then it will deviates like this so that sternocostal surface present direct contact with lower two pieces that to left part of two pieces of sternum right this part what we call area of cardiac dullness area of cardiac dullness because when you are doing percussion 
remaining all part you can feel resonance sound resonance sound because of air which is present in the lungs but this part no lung so no air here within this part what is there direct pericardium is there behind that heart is there heart filled with fluid that means blood so when you tap over that you cannot feel the resonance wise you cannot hear that what you can hear you can hear dull note because it is filled with blood fluid that's what this area this area what we call area of dullness clear i took more time it seems right anyway but it's worth clear then diaphragmatic surface we will discuss now sternocostal surface completed then diaphragmatic surface this diaphragmatic surface this is diaphragmatic surface this diaphragmatic surface see here this is diaphragmatic surface see here i am drawing diaphragm so this is diaphragm so heart will be resting over the diaphragm and it is surrounded by pericardium after pericardium what will be there diaphragm clear below the diaphragm what will be present what is this what is this liver and stomach fundus of stomach clear i think it's disproportionate because liver is larger than the stomach clear so so this is diaphragmatic surface that means this one this diaphragmatic surface resting over the diaphragm and it is in relation with the cardiac notch of liver fundus of stomach these two structures are separated by diaphragm and this is formed by two third by left ventricle one third by right ventricle diaphragmatic surface is formed by two third by left ventricle one third by right ventricle clear and in this surface there is a groove this groove what we are calling posterior interventricular groove or sulcus posterior interventricular groove or sulcus clear then after diaphragmatic surface left surface left surface is this side actually this left surface present behind the left border clear and it is rounded surface and it is in relation with the left lung left lung actually in that surface you can found one groove what is this groove atrio ventricular groove that is left part left part of atrio ventricular groove you can found in that surface clear and it is in relation with the left lung nothing is there much to describe about that it is in relation with the this is left surface left surface it is in relation with the left lung that means mediastinal surface of left lung and phrenic nerve and pericardioco phrenic vessels phrenic nerve and pericardioco phrenic vessels clear so these are the structures in relation with the left surface clear with this we have completed external features of heart right then to make it easy i will tell you two formulas one is only features another is two third one third formula so that you can easily understand the external features of heart and even you can easily remember also that's what i will try to explain this see first if you take the only features right border formed only by right atrium is it or not right border formed only by right atrium clear 
then base is formed only by atria both right and left diaphragmatic surface formed only by ventricles right apex form only by left ventricle clear so these are the only features is you know right border only right atrium apex only by left ventricle base only by atria both right and left diaphragmatic surface formed only by ventricles both right and left clear then two third one third formula two third one third formula if you see of course the sternocostal surface formed by atrium also but mostly it is formed by ventricles how two third by two third by right ventricle one third by left ventricle is it here base two third by left atrium one third by right atrium clear and here diaphragmatic surface two third by left ventricle one third by right ventricle is it and position wise position wise heart is located two third towards the left side one third towards right side it is not totally present in the left side it is not present in the center so it is present two third towards left side one third towards right side clear and if you want to say the directions and how they are directed different surfaces apex directed downwards forwards and towards left side at the fifth intercostal space and base is exactly opposite to this base is directed upwards backwards and towards right side this is forwards downwards and towards left side and base is directed upwards backwards and towards right side clear then this sternocostal surface it will be like this heart so sternocostal surface directed upwards and forwards right then this is diaphragmatic surface directed backwards and downwards backwards and downwards clear and if you see the left surface left surface directed upwards and towards left side upwards and towards left side right so that is about external features after break we will try to discuss about interior of right atrium because it's very important topic for examination purpose clear